All right, great. Well, uh, you know, fantastic. Let's, let's get into it, you know, okay. uh, <laughs> get into the uh, nuts bits. And uh, yeah, good to see you. You're uh, safe and well to start. Okay. I have a, uh, John McCarthy here, the uh, founder of Rock House and Teach Kids Music. Okay. <laughs> uh, I think a lot of people know about Rock House, which is uh, distributed by Hal Leonard at this point. Um, yeah. and, 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 you know, tell me also about uh, what, what Teach Kids Music is. Uh, you know, give me, give us a little information about what it's about, why you decided to start that and how things are going on during a pandemic. Okay. Well, Teach Kids Music, I started about three, three and a half, coming up four years actually ago. Um, and it's just that I wanted to find a way to give back to the community. Uh, it started out with just me doing um, uh, concerts with a couple of my friends, uh, Doug Wimbish, uh, we were doing these Wimbash events and, um, and we were raising money at those events for school programs. Um, you know, so we were, you know, whatever city we did and we were doing local events, uh, uh, you know, concert events. And then from there, I took it to the next level. I started doing, um, use instrument drives where we had, um, anybody uh, who had an instrument. There's a lot of people who have a, a guitar or a keyboard just sitting in a closet somewhere just collecting dust. You know, so we offered, if anybody has a gently used instrument, they could offer it to us. We clean it up, you know, restring it, whatever. And then we have children that are in need that really want to play, but maybe they have a single parent or, you know, but they don't have the resources to get even an instrument. So we clean it up, we give it to the, uh, the, the child that wants to start learning. And it's, it, it's crazy to see the smile on the face that it brings to them. And, uh, uh, and we take a picture of the person that's donating the instrument, and then we take a picture of the, the child when he gets it, and we put it together so that they can see you know, the, the joy they're bringing as well. So that's one of the, the things that we're doing. But then I started working on my Little Rockers program, which is the, you know, um, that I'm, I just released a book for. And, and basically, it, it perplexed me because a lot of the schools around that I know, they don't, uh, they don't accept students until like six, seven years old. To be honest with you, the three to the six-year-old area, that, that little time frame is in a child's life. That's the best time to really get them into music. So what I did is I created this thing. It's called the pre-schematic stage of artistic learning, where we started with clapping and tapping patterns, and they go along. And then we do percussion instruments, rhythm sticks, shakers, tambourines. And then we start applying that to music. And then they actually get the first lessons on guitar, piano, drums, ukulele, singing. And it's amazing this, the success we've seen with this. I mean, kids that... I've had kids that are five and six years old playing two, three instruments, playing festivals together, you know, and playing songs with other kids that age. And they're sponges at that age. So that's what really uh, inspired me to put this together and put it into Teach Kids Music and try to get it out to boys and girls clubs, YMCA's, community centers, and give a, a program that we could teach somebody who's not even musical how to teach that program. Yeah, yeah. Well, I I wish I got into it when I was five. You know, it'd be awesome. I'd be like, rocking out now. I'd be on, I'd be playing gigs and all that. It'd be pretty awesome. But no, I'll, you know, it didn't go that way for me. But you know, well, what are you gonna do? Uh, <laughs> but, yeah, that, that's great. So, so, so tell us a little more about them. Um, you said you just came out with a book. I, I think you're you're working with the the Dario Foundation. Is that right with that? And uh, tell me about that. What? Why? Yeah, you're... yeah. This is the book here. The, the Teach Kids, uh, the Little Rockers book. Um, well, I met with Suzanne D'Addario at the last name show, the last name show that we were able to have, <laughs> which is back in right. 20, the 2000, uh, January, yeah. January 20th. Uh, sure. I met with Suzanne D'Addario there, and, and she is, uh, is a great lady, and uh, she really helps a lot of companies uh, in, in uh, music instruction and uh, with kids, and she saw what I was doing, and she was inspired. And she said she wanted to get her foundation involved with us. So they gave us a grant to help us printing the books um, so that we could get the books printed so that we could just offer them to all these the programs for all those community centers and everything like that. So we just got that done. So excited. I got the books. And, uh, and uh, now we're working with some other partners. Um, PV Electronics is also behind us. We're, we're uh, actually looking for a, a, a percussion instrument uh, company to help 
come with us and maybe help donate some percussion instruments instruments for the kids to use in the program. So we're working on that as well. But um, but right now we're just getting that program launched and uh, I'm really happy that Diabario was behind us on that. Yeah, yeah. Um, so so you're, so you're seeing some good, um, uh, other than the need for precaution, you're, you, are you seeing some more uh, donations during these times or is it kind of, are they kind of holding back because of, you know, tough economic times? Well, the, the used instrument drives, I mean, we, we constantly get people bringing instruments into us. You know, we've, you know, hundreds of instruments we've gotten to these kids. So that's continuing all the time. Um, obviously, um, the, uh, the Teach Kids Music classes, it's hard to get groups of kids together up, up until now, um, you know, because of the pandemic. But um, I think that now, you know, hopefully, fingers crossed that things will start to get better and we can start having these classes being taught. I know some, you know, I mean, there are kids in classes now uh, in the regular schools, um, you know, so they have, you know, masks and everything like that. So I think that in a small capacity, we can start to launch this program in, in some of these community centers and, um, and get the kids back into music a little bit. Yeah, well, I mean, both my kids are in school today, knock on wood. I'm, I'm actually knocking on wood here below. You can see it. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so that's a nice, pleasant thing to see. I didn't think I'd see it in 2020, to be honest. Uh, yeah. Well, after March, I guess I didn't think it would happen. Uh, but yeah, so that's, that's, that's a good sign. So, you know, I wanted to ask you just uh, briefly about Rock House, too. It, it kind of seems like, it, you know, it's kind of going into your wheelhouse here. You know, you know I, I mean, the online instruction, videos. I mean, that seems like you're, you're already a master at that, and now everyone needs it. So, so is, is that business kind of, I would think it's kind of doing pretty well, right? I mean, so it might be good. Yeah, stuff. I mean, the online instruction is, is a big part of it. I mean, I mean, back when we first started Rock House, we were doing DVDs, and we all know that what happened with the DVD market, I mean, that, that definitely declined out. Um, so, I mean, it, it's almost, when I first started Rock House, actually, we were VHS videos, and, and you know, I, I started back in 87, you know, VHS right. videos and stuff like that, and then that phased out, and then we moved into the internet and, and DVDs, and that phased out. Um, now we're doing online, and... So you always got to keep reinventing yourself. So you got to keep looking at the next, what's coming next, what's, ne what's going to be the next thing going on. I mean, I told you out of the pandemic, sometimes you get some opportunities. And I know that right when, after it all started back in April, I think it was, um, David Elson, who from Megadeth, the bass player, was a good friend of mine who I worked on some programs with. He uh, reached out to me because he also has a nonprofit called the, uh, the Dave Elson Youth Music Foundation. And he was asking me if I could get him some videos that he could use to place on his his uh, sites to help some kids that were out of uh, out of school and were still wanted to do some music lessons. So I helped him with that, and we were talking back and forth, and and we actually are going to be starting a new uh, a new business that he's going to be involved in, which is going to be called Rock House uh, Lessons Live, and it's going to be all online. Artists. We're gonna have three levels of artists: gold, platinum, and diamond artists. And you know, you could, and it's gonna be all online. You know, we're gonna have people as high as you know the guys from you know Megadeth or Bumblefoot, or you know, and then we'll have regular artists that are great musicians that might not be famous, that you know are awesome musicians. There's a lot of those out there too. Uh, but it's all gonna be with the quality of Rock House and uh, behind it. So we're starting that, and uh, we're hopefully gonna be launching that in the next uh, next month. Oh, great. Okay. Well, then when you're going to do that, let me know. Uh, you know, we got, yeah, you got to get Dave to come on with a, a Zoom with me also. It'd be awesome to talk about it. You know, I, yeah, he's, love, love to get him. he's yeah. you know, he's, he's always been really good with, uh, you know, wanting to give back and, and, uh, uh, and teaching and stuff like that. When we were doing our DVDs, you know, we worked with a lot of different, hundreds of different artists. He was one of those ones that we, we booked him for three days to come in. And he finished in a half a day. <laughs> you know, he's, some guys were like, at the end of three days, we don't even finish half of what we need to do. But he was like on it, you know. And he, so he has also a passion for teaching and helping kids. And, you know, obviously he has, his, you know, the, the Youth Music Foundation that he started. So yeah, um, he's a great, a great partner and a great guy. So I'd love to have him come on with us and, uh, and talk to you more about it. Yeah, yeah, I don't, I don't have him on my uh, speed dial, so uh, you, you definitely uh, let me, you know, if you could reach out to him when that sets up, and yeah, would yeah. reach out, to him. you know, maybe you could send an email and uh, introduce us both. Uh, 
Yeah, well, well, thanks. You know, actually, you know, it's maybe neither here nor there. I know you're you're not prepared for it, but yeah, but now that I got you, you're talking about the celebrities. You got a lot on. You got a lot that you could call. I, I mean, it kind of out of curiosity. Um, are they? You know. I guess bummed out is the word. I mean, they can't do these live gigs. I mean, they have to do Zoom things or, or nothing. I mean, what, what is their kind of, um, you know, their feelings, their demeanor right now? I mean, I mean, how tough is it for them when they can't, you know, they're, they're basically their whole business has been taken away except maybe writing songs or, you know, doing working on albums. I mean, so how, how are they feeling? Yeah, I talk to them all the time, you know, all the guys. And, uh, and that's, they're, they're all, they're keeping a positive attitude. A lot of them are writing music at this time. You know, they're sort of t trying to take the off time to say like, well, we're not going to sit here and, you know, pay, you know, play cards all day long. Let's, let's start working on some new music. And this way, when we're able to go out, you know, we'll have this, this whole, uh, you know, new line, uh, no, new music to bring out and, 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 and promote and everything. Uh, but when I was talking to David Elson, he, he was saying also, he said they do have a lot of free time, you know, that, and that's why, you know, starting this Rock House Lessons Live, could be a great time for them because there's they are you know a lot of them you know have a lot of free time because they're not touring but he was even saying that even when touring goes on i mean they're touring for maybe six months and then they're off for six months or something like that and those six months they're off a lot of times they're sitting home and they all would like to do extra things and giving back you know to kids and and uh and you know being one-on-one -on -one with the kids a lot of these artists really want to do it they want help you know yeah, that's great. It's awesome to hear. Thank you for everything. Uh, yeah, this is great stuff. Did Did you know Eddie Van Halen? I guess well, you know, before I let you get. Yeah. No, I you know I never got to meet him. Uh, I'm, 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 I met him once at a damn show, but not just like meet and greet kind of thing. I never got to hang out with him. That's what I should have said. Yeah. Um, yeah. Um, but that was such a sad, sad thing. It hit me like punch in the stomach. I was like, I didn't expect it. You know, I knew he was had tongue cancer. I heard about, but I didn't think it was that. That that uh, bad. Then how about you? Yeah, that was sad. Oh, that was sad news. Yeah, I just have the one uh, story that I'll have in my next editorial is a uh, in November. I should say. I don't know if people watching this. Uh, <clears throat> when I Fender invited me to the a party they had, and I think it was about 2007. I, I'd have to ask Fender if they remember. But um, and they just said, "Come to the party tonight." I was at their booth looking, checking out their new gear. And they just said, we're going to have a, you know, we're going to have a big guy tonight. You know, you know, you, you don't know. But when someone says that, you know, you, you, you don't know because, you know, but they, they always came through. I mean, they're like amazing. Like they told me once we're going to have a big, you know, baseball player, go, go say hi to him. And I remember I figured it's just like a backup infielder or something, you know, <laughs> it's in the minor leagues. And then, and then the guy comes out, he's like the Cy Young winner from the prior year. <laughs> so, <laughs> I mean, offender just always came through. And I, I was like, I was like, okay, you got someone, but it's probably like a known, you know, known name, but it's probably not someone humongous, you know, I mean, who could it be? And I, I come out and I'm like, you know, right next to me, I'm right next to Eddie Van Halen. I'm like, <laughs> I'm like how good is this? So I'm just taking pictures of him, taking pictures of him, but I didn't get to meet him. I just got to you know, hang out right next to him. I would have violated social distancing laws today. <laughs> I've been telling people because I was less than six feet away from the guy. <laughs> that would not have worked. Uh, but uh, yeah, it was just, I, I think I took, I must have taken at least 150 pictures of him just playing. He just played a couple songs, but, and he, the guy's magic. I mean, it's just like, when he starts playing, it's just like magic. You're just taking to a to a different place. It's, oh my God, I just, it's love not it. many people that change guitar like he did. I mean, it's, yeah, it's, you know, maybe a handful of uh, tops and, uh, you know, just sad to see him go that quick, man. It's like, uh, you know, like I yeah. said, it really, uh, I know that, you know, our instructors at the schools, a lot of them are really uh, big Van Halen fans and guitar instructors, and they were all like, a couple were crying. <laughs> like, can't believe it, you know? Yeah. I'm bummed. I, I know I'm bummed out. And I mean, I had a couple of Zoom conversations with people just about basically that topic. So it's, uh, it, it's, it's sad stuff, but. Hey, well, th well, thanks. I don't want to, you know, uh, I got, we'll, we'll, you down. We'll think if I can tell you, I'm sure. I something else on the horizon that I wanted to mention to you. Um, and uh, I'm going to be uh, giving more information about this in the next uh, few weeks, but I just got awarded a patent for um, a new keyboard learning system. Oh, um, yeah, and, and basically it's called KeyTab, and it's basically like the tablatures for guitar. 
you know, it's directly rated for that uh, related to that instrument and it makes it easy to get to learn things quickly. About 15 years ago, I, I, I invented this whole system and uh, basically because a lot of kids that were playing piano, you know, for them to get to the point where they could play piano with two hands, it takes them about a year, year and a half of, of taking lessons, you know, to get to that reading really music notation. And a lot of the kids wanted to learn songs quick. You know, and I started to see students dropping off because like they want to learn songs and they didn't want to put in the time with this instant gratification mindset we have today. So I started um, putting this whole thing together called KeyTab. And about five years ago, I had a student of mine, a piano student, uh, the mother comes to me and her daughter was taking lessons for like two months and she learned Let It Be by the Beatles. And she comes to me, she was like, I can't believe it. She learned to play a song in two months not even two months, and she's playing a bit. What's this music? And I said, it's something I invented called Kita. And oh. she smiled and said, I work for a patent office. You can patent that. So I was like, wow. So we put in the patent five years ago, and, and we worked on it and, and went through the whole process. It's a pretty hard process to go through it. And I actually got a call back, a, a letter back in December, saying that it was declined. And they cited two other patents they thought it might have been sort of similar to. And I looked at it and I was like, this is nothing like what I have. So the lady said I could write a rebuttal, but there's only like a 5% chance that it will be overturned because it has to go back to the same examiner. And nobody likes to say they're wrong, you know what I mean? <laughs> and so I put it this lengthy explanation of why it was different. And then back, uh, back in April, I got it. Uh, they sent me a letter saying I was accepted for it. And then I just got the, the whole patent packet because it was delayed from uh, COVID and stuff like that, but I just got the whole thing. So I'm writing a whole book on key tab for songs. And it's, it, I mean, people can learn songs like within, you know, three or four weeks start writing songs on the keyboard. And, then, and not to take the place of music notation, but to use in tandem with it, it's going to be a game changer for, for music schools and teachers to get the kids in, interested and excited about learning piano right away and keep them uh, going through the whole process. So. Uh, I'm going to be sending you some of that stuff in the, in the next few weeks. I'm going to have a whole uh, patch put together about that. Wow, that sounds awesome! Fantastic! You know, uh, congratulations! Yeah, that's 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 good stuff. I, I hope you have that patent hanging on your wall somewhere. I, I don't see in the background there, but uh, I'm sure. Yeah, yeah, I got I, I just I just got it not too long ago. I'm actually going <laughs> to make a little package of it and uh, put it together. But it, next year, guitars over there in the back. It, it actually has. It comes with a, a, a note strip like this. Uh, yeah. But it's color coded the one I have now. This is the first run of it. I made as different colors for each octave, and that fits right in the uh, in any keyboard. It fits right behind the keys to help the people get started with it. So it's 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 pretty cool. I mean, uh, oh, yeah. I've been working on it for a while, and and I know from my schools that I mean we have three times as many piano students as anybody around any other school around, and that's why because the word gets out there when parents see success with something, they're like, wow. Oh. You know, little Susie's learning all these songs. She's only been playing for two months, but my, my son's been playing for a year. He can only play Twinkle Twinkle Little Star, you know? Yeah, yeah, that's <laughs> awesome. Congrats. Uh, you know, that, that, that's really great stuff. Anything that could help our industry, I think this is awesome like that. And, uh, well, that's the thing. I mean, that's all I want to do is get more people playing music, you know, from the little kids rock thing, from the uh, uh, little rockers thing, and, and then all the way up to, you know, the key tap stuff. It's, you know, it's, it's getting these kids to play music. I mean, Music programs are getting defunded in the schools all the time, you know. And we got to have things to keep the kids in, in, in interested in music and involved in music. Okay, okay, great. Well, how, how can people uh, check you out if they either want to look at your information or donate? Uh, well, where, where should they go? Yes, teachkidmusic.org or, you know, Rockhouse Method or rockhouseschool.com, yeah. Okay, okay. Thanks, John. I appreciate it. Thanks, Brian. Thanks for having me. And I'll, I'll get back to you when, uh, with David, too. <laughs>